world. Today, the Dub Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1977 Chevrolet Country Square motorhome back on the road for the first time in 15 years. Oh, I think it latched finally. Yes! <laughs> Fixed it! The story is, we picked this thing up at an online auction. We don't know anything about it other than there was a picture inside the cab and it showed it had a small block with yellow plug wires and headers, so we know it's gotta be fast. This thing's fast and you are special. Just loves the Hoover Schneef. Mountains of it. That's literally what we did all day today, move snow. Come home from the Super Bowl, our poor Eagles, we're one play away several times from winning it, but hey, my cousin had a great game. I had a good time, 75 degrees there. It's 12 degrees here and we got, I don't know how much snow. The wind blew all night, really packed it in. I would say we probably got four to six inches of snow, but it packed it in hard. So Mojo and I spent the entire day moving snow. Duff spent the entire day running around digging in it, Hoover sneefing it. Look at this, what, what do you suppose the street value of this stuff is? Have you any idea what the street value of this mountain is? There's just mountains of it. Mountain there, mountain there, never mind uh, the smoke signals we're sending over there. One day my cell phone started smoking and the people standing around me thought I was sending a text message. Mountains there. Oh, I didn't know the Grape Concord has a moonroof. But anyway, we got this motorhome that we're going to try to get running. She's been off the road since November 08, so what's that? 14 years and three months. Somebody's gonna get that CS tattoo because it's awesome. We're gonna try dragging it out with Bernie because we got the whole yard cleaned out. And you know, I'm, I'm practicing my hooker skills. I'm getting better. Thanks so much for everybody who commented the negativity down below. It really helps me out. So we're gonna get this figured out. The only problem is the back of this thing sits about this far off the ground. So as we lift the front end up, the back end's gonna get that much closer. So I don't know how it's gonna go. We're just gonna wing it, but shoving this thing around with the Bobcat isn't gonna go well because of how big it is and you can't see around it, so. We got a tow truck. Let's do it. It's cold, it's 12 degrees. So we're gonna just hook onto this thing and carry on with our lives and get it inside the nice warm shop. That sound like a good idea? You got the Hoover Schneef all the way up your forehead. Silly dog. Yeah, that's where we're gonna hook on, the control arm. And then you go, around the bottom thing and then hook it to the hook and then hook the hook on the slack on the top i don't know let's do this like yeah you're supposed to go around that somehow anyway we're probably doing it wrong maybe we got to go over the top and around we'll try that there we go. Over the top, around, back up, slack. I mean, it makes sense if you don't think about it. Oh, Bernie, this thing is good. Get yourself a wrecker tow truck. Highly recommend it. All right, now we just lift her up. I guess that DD Speed Shop, he's got a video on how to do this, so maybe I should go check it out. Is that guy, he's real intelligent. All right, up. Oh. And the back's probably dragging, so we should have plenty of traction. Looks like that tire is about ready to have kittens. Speaking of kittens, where'd Duff go? All right, you follow me.
Well, Bernie had to get her stuck for the first time. Like, we could probably let it down and drive it out and rehook, but I think I'm just gonna go get some help, aka somebody with thumbs, aka the mojo himself. And we're just gonna push on the back with some big piece of equipment that we have around here. Everything will go swimmingly. Right, Duff? We're burning daylight. And my glasses are covered in snow. All right, back to work. Because he has mojo. Mojo? Mojo. Oh yeah. Bernie's got it. That thing is real good. Is that a West Coast Choppers? What do they call it? It's like a swastika for California in the back window. Iron Cross. That's the words I was looking for. I think surely been to Sturgis. Sometimes you just need a little help from your friends. What's that beeping about? Sometimes your friends need thumbs. Or to be hydraulically powered and hydrostatic and diesel engine and all that good stuff. Expensive, that's what. We got old Walter White inside here and thawed out, so let's take a look a little bit closer and see just what kind of gym we got ourselves into. What do you think, Duff? Yeah, it's got a chrome bumper, chrome grill, I think which was an option. Who knows what this thing costs new? We should look it up. Chin should look it up for us. I'm guessing these things were, a new pickup in 79 was like five, six grand for a nice one. This thing was probably like, 12, 15,000 bucks, which is like 1.2 million in current uh, dollars. We interrupt your regularly scheduled mediocre shenanigans to bring you this Mortski Minute, brought to you by Chico's Bail Bonds. Not really. It's brought to you by Mortski Repair. Bonus point if you know what the movie Chico's Bail Bond is from. We got some new merchandise. We got my 64 Impala station wagon, Duff hanging out the passenger side, hot off the press. Get yourself that. Link down below for the uh, merchandise site. So, this week's Mortski Minute is all about motorhomes. That's right, we're working on the 1977 Country Squire here, so I thought I would give you a little bit of a motorhome history that I could come up with. So, motorhomes have been around pretty much before motors, like, let's be honest. It all started back in the 1800s with basically the Oregon Trail covered wagons was kind of the same thing. Families were moving across the country and camping. They didn't have motors, they had oxen or they had horses, whatever, pulling their wagons. That all changed with the inventation, advent of the automobile, mainly the Ford Model T. There was some in the early 1900s. Uh, 1910, there was a three ton Packard conversion that was, uh, some say, one of the first motorhomes. There was a 1915 Model T Roadster that had a telescoping apartment in the back for traveling salesmen to sleep. And there was a lot of other stuff in that people just created on their own back then. Uh, Mass-produced motorhomes probably weren't commonplace until the 1960s with the Winnebago. So let's go a little bit uh, deeper into RVs, which is short for recreational vehicle. So in the 1930s, there was teardrop campers. There was uh, plans that you could get out of like... Uh, Motor Trend, not Motor Trend, 
Life magazine and stuff like that. For building your own teardrop campers, there was mass-produced teardrop campers. There was Mullins trailers, which was basically not really a travel trailer, but you could haul your stuff for camping and then set up your tent and everything that you had inside of there. With that, uh, and then in the 1930s, Airstream also came out, the old silver bullet. Tried and true, there's a huge following for those. I'd love to find one of those things. They're awesome, but they are big bucks. And when would I ever find time to go camping? Duff would love it. Well, he probably wouldn't love the camping party, just like enjoying the outdoors. So in the 1950s, Shasta was the common place, also known as the canned ham. Uh, that was kind of the style that everybody went to in the 50s. You could pull them with your with your bigger cars in the 1950s. Uh, the 1960s is kind of when the motorhomes became commonplace. Don't get me wrong, there was motorhomes before that, like we talked about, a lot of uh, custom conversions, and there was some factory-built ones out there as well. By the 1960s, Winnebago came out with their full-on, whatever chassis they were using, and they used their own body to make it. And uh, they were about 5,000 bucks at the time uh, to, Give you an example of how much that was. My 1964 station wagon was about thirty-four or $3,500, I think, uh, was MSRP on that. So uh, about twice the price of, uh, of your common vehicle or, or close to that. And then in the 1970s, uh, things kind of exploded. A lot more manufacturers, the ones that I like in the 1970s, uh, GMC made a full fiberglass unit, so they didn't leak. Uh, they had several different designs. They had air ride suspension in the rear, tandem axle, front wheel drive. I think they had 455 Oldsmobile Tornados. I think that was a really classic design. There's a huge following for those things as well. We almost did a video on one, purchased one at an auction, but it went just a little bit too high. We probably should have bid after it. So I think those things are, are super cool. The 60s and the 70s also brought, uh, that's when the vans kind of came in. The Volkswagen buses was a huge common sight in the 1960s and the 1970s, and they, and they still are a huge cult following for those as well. And then in the 80s was the Fleetwood, which was uh, commonly portrayed by Walter White in Breaking Bad. Uh, it's not a Winnebago, it is a Fleetwood. So yeah, those were common in the 80s. And then kind of the current theme is uh, the van life, again, has come back around. You see a lot of Mercedes and Dodge Sprinters are, are kind of the common sight that I've seen, but guys are taking 1980s GM and Ford and uh, Chrysler conversion vans and making those into uh, uh, smaller RVs as well. And so that brings us to the classes of RVs. There's three, there's three classes, the Class A, the Class B, and the Class C. Class A is what I call your snowbirds. Up here you see them going south in November and December, and then probably in... April, March, maybe late March, coming back north. Now, uh, those are the ones that you you could pretty much live out of for the entire winter. A lot of times, you'll see them having a hitch on the back and they're towing their Prius down the road or or what have you. But these are a lot of diesel pusher chassis. There are a lot of uh, conventional cab truck chassis, like your Freightliners, your Internationals, your Peterbilt stuff like that. So these are like the big rigs of motorhomes. Uh, a lot of slide outs, uh, full bathroom, full kitchen multiple TVs, uh, stuff like that. They can either have one big bedroom in there, or they can sleep, you know, eight, 10, 12 people. And so you'd think class A, huge, class B, medium, class C, small. No, they're, they're, they're totally bass backwards. I don't know why they come up with this. Class B is basically your vans, like we just talked about, your GMC Sprinters, your conversion vans, stuff like that. So you go from the biggest down to the smallest. You got your, basically your big rigs, in your vans. And then the middle is the Class C that we got here with our 1977 Country Squire. It's basically a, a kind of a cabin chassis or, or a van conversion, but the dead giveaway on a Class C is that they got the sleeper or the bed right above the cabin. There's usually a bunk up there, so that's what designates ours as a Class C. You can get some Class Cs with slide outs and full bathrooms and stuff like that, but a lot of times these have a wet bath like this one has where Basically everything's in there and it's contained and it's sealed where the toilet, the sink, the shower is all just kind of one big fiberglass or plastic molding to get everything wet where you've got a, a separate shower and toilet and everything in a, uh, a full bath and like a class A motorhome. So there you have it. That is your worthless information about motorhomes. More than you ever wanted to know about motorhomes. I'm sure I missed your family's favorite motorhome that they had. 
invented in the turn of the century or or whatever uh, the first motor home is probably in your hometown on display uh, there's a there's a pretty good uh, RV and motor vehicle hall of fame in Elkhart, Indiana. A lot of motor homes and RV campers and stuff are made in Indiana. I don't know what the, why why they all conglomerated there, but pretty much every motor home or camper that you see going down the road, going to dealerships, has got uh, Indiana tags on it. So I don't know. We'll have to dig into that why why that stuff's in there. So let me know what you want to see on the next Mordsky Minute. We try to keep it. Uh, short and we try to keep it to semi-local small stuff but maybe we branch out into the history of motorhome stuff like that um, so that's all we got for you like i said sponsored by Morski ourselves go get yourself some merch so that we can uh, afford to keep heat in this place when it's 15 below wind chills in the middle of the february we still got a lot of winter left but anyway back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans she's been painted i don't know if that's primer showing through and then they took some white brushed it on you know the finest the meth lab got a little bit warm in south dakota i'm on meth i'm on meth i'm on meth and melted the park light it's a chevy van you can tell because the way that it is this is an aspen you can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is the steel techs have simulators on them a little bit different than we're used to seeing. Kind of like that guy. Never mind about that thing. We'll get to it one of these days. Should we check out the outside and then go to the inside? Okay, deal. Oh, more brush on paint. The trim's falling off. It's got a satellite radio antennae. Is satellite radio even a thing anymore? I don't know. A little hailed out down the side. You know, it's got the cottage cheese action going if you're into that kind of stuff. It's got an exhaust cut out. And it says, the cap must be securely in place while the vehicle is in motion. You can only have the cutouts going in the parking lot, Duff. Look at that. Twice pipes coming out the side, though. Yeah, they cheaped out and didn't run them all the way out the back. I bet this thing would bark with dual straight pipes all the way out the back. It's got a... It's a hybrid, so it's got the charger built right in. Elon Musk style. What's going on here? This the vent for the... Heater, something to do with the heating situation. Fender flares, you know, to clear these giant, what are they, 235, 85, 16 stuff? Or are they 16 fives? 800 16 fives. Dang it, but at least they're not split rims. Stainless gas cap. Again, this thing must have been way too close to the meth lab. It wasn't the meth lab at the time, maybe it was since then, but check it out, Duff. Any meth in there? He's not much of a drug dog. He's not much for drugs either, are you, Duff? Yeah. I don't know what was in there. Storage, water hookup, park light melted off. We stole the spare for another ramp truck. Those are Corvette tail lights. Guarantee it, C5, I think. I don't know what they got going on in the receiver hitch, but clearly Ray Charles welded it in there. You got the right one, baby, yeah. And then uh, Ronnie Millsap ground it down. What is the song called? Let's go get stoned. What a stone? I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, I can't read my handwriting. That's fine. Right? I couldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a giant piece of tubing, and then they just sleeved it. I don't know what's going on. They got a bolt in it, so it's safe. Seven-pin trailer connector. Oh yeah, good stuff. Look at that. They had her at the rally. They were peddling meth there. They were growing the meth at home, and then they had a fire, and then they had to liquidate and then took this thing to the rally i'm pretty sure and then they sold just enough to get by and now they're probably in prison i don't know if we dare check out the inside it's a suburban dayton tennessee must be a vent outdoor ashtray except for it's mounted upside down oh you can plug in on the outside sweet ac Yep, capped off, pipe plug, yep, awesome electrical work, check, uh, yeah, you could either plug it in over there, Duff, or you could plug it in right there, oh, 12 of 05, that's a pretty new one, is that the fridge, or is that the AC unit, I think that's the fridge, I think an AC unit was supposed to be here, this thing's nice, oh, it's in this compartment, 
That's the propane tank. I provide the people of this community with propane and propane accessories. Oh, she's half full, Duff. Let's try not to blow, yeah, do the sniff test, see if it's leaking. Let's try not to blow our faces off. Got tires a little low, just on the bottom side. Does have the simulator, but it's facing the wrong way, so it looks super silly. See, like I said, this was their sales office for said meth lab. Country Squire meth. Oh, Duff can't wait. Check it out, man. You think you hate it now, wait till you drive it. You think you hate it now, but wait till you drive it. Had to grab a light, Duff. So hopefully you didn't uh, find all the good stuff without me. Smoke detector. Oh, nope, clock. Let me guess, quit at 420. I can't read a clock. 440. Way off. 440 in this motorhome would have been sweet. Um, some bird sacrificed its life, probably to the animal that tore that foam out everywhere. The old shower, pooper, sink, tub combo. You can do your lines off that mirror. It uh, comes off the wall, I'm sure. Look at all these drawers for hiding things in. That's for access for the plumbing. Duff, Quiff, Hoover, Schneefen, all the coon turds back there. That's the remnants left over from their meth growing. Oh, the electrical in here is top notch. We got wire nuts for days, Duff. Oh, look at these. Comes with, oh, please be romance novels. Louis L'Amour? You can't go wrong with that. A great novel of the magnificent Sackett family. The Mojave Crossing. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's the Mojave. This book belongs to Francis M. Tucker in Sioux City, Iowa. He's probably in prison by now. He's all about the Louis L'Amour. Night over Solomon's. Hmm. The only authorized edition. First time paperback. I think Louis L'Amour's from North Dakota, isn't he? How would I know? Long arm in hard rock country. Tabor Evans, never heard of him. He's probably pretty good though. Here's another Louis L'Amour. The Skyliners, they stole this from Francis M. Tucker as well. All kinds of stories about the Sackett family. Bob Sackett, didn't he just die? Yeah, I know, it's Bob Sackett. What is that? Holder for your knives. Oh, look at this. Brand new pizza cutter, all this stuff's brand new duff. And all you can do is suck farts out of the couch. Come on, take this all in. Floral pattern plates. What a deal. A radio flashlight? Like there's nothing I wanna do more than walk around outside in the dark looking for night crawlers and listen to some fishing in the dark. Or maybe some Joe Diffie or some Squirrely Dan. Oh, Steely Dan, whatever. Oh, these are, you remember these things? These are like the, the paper plate boosters for back in the day, you know? How do you class up a paper plate? Well, you take a piece of hay and you make it into a plate and then you put it underneath your paper plate. Those are classy. They remind me of, uh, what are they, Triscuits? Is that what those things are? You just kind of want to take a bite of one. I'm not putting that anywhere close to my mouth. Use for cooking meth. It says it right there. Are, have you sucked all the coon farts out of there yet? God. Anything good in here? That's where he's living, Duff. He's gonna be in here. Nope, he's not. No apple pie. Definitely a mouse nest, though. I'm just gonna close that up. Electrical control center? Fuses, maybe? Oh yeah, breakers. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Plumbing, I'm guessing. Whew, water heater. Oh, she's capped off. We weren't using that. See, they weren't living in this thing at the end. They were just clearly using it to sell meth. Yep. There's the anhydrous bottle that they make the meth with right there. Mm hmm. Oh, come on. Be some Budweiser's. Nope, no Budweiser's. Wow. I'm no carpenter, but look at this wood hackery. You know, Phillips, Torx, treated, clearly not treated and used. Oh yeah, they did her all up right in the old country square. If this thing could talk. 
Oh my gosh. I'm sure some unsuspecting person lost their virginity in this thing, unfortunately. Yep. There's the tin foil. That's what they smoke the meth out of. All right. Let's go up front and check her out. Any uh, more farts down there? Yeah, come on, carry on, pal. Oh, there's even seat belts, because just what you want to do is be seat belted in backwards onto a piece of foam and particle board. Oh, gross. You can see all the hair from the raccoons that were up here. Ugh. Oh. And uh, that was the last known inhabitant right there. He's no longer with us. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Hey, here's our other simulator. What a deal. She is a 350. And then it says 350 right there. June of 77. So this is probably a 77. Maybe she's a 78 model. So I don't get it. There's that factory area here. And then there's this chrome one here. I don't know what they had going on here. All of the air coolers. I think, I'm guessing they cut this open and they were trickling gas in there, trying to get her to run. Let's take a seat. Oh yeah. Oh, that ain't what I wanted. And there it is. There's the riser for the carburetor. It's got the road gear, the finest from Elko. Oh, cruise control, score. Sweet. Takancha brake controller, flipping sweet. Sweet. No keys. Good news is we know how to bust ignition switches out of vans. We won't bust this one. We'll just unplug it from the backside like we should have probably done in the first place on the last one. Tilt column. Yeah, you can see it's add-on cruise. Tilt column, column shift. And the ignition switch is on the dash. That's a pretty desirable column. I think that same column is a 67 to 72 Chevy pickup. With some slight differences, you could put it in the pickup. Nobody would ever know. There might be something on the length and then maybe the electrical connector. But that column used to be good property before they reproduce them. I mean, it still probably is good property. What are you eating back there? Hey, those aren't chicken bones. That was the guy who died upstairs. Or the guy who died down here. I don't know. Whatever. All right. So... I'm guessing that should be a turbo 400. I don't know how you would know other than crawling underneath there. It's got headers, so, you know, hauling meth, you wanna go as fast as you can. HEI cap has been busted. Yellow plug wires, real fast. They're high temp, super stock radio suppression. They're not Excels or anything, so maybe not as fast as I was hoping. Quadrabog, but what? Oh, hit the high note there. I don't know what was mounted to that bracket. It's got the giant, is that a York compressor? Oh, look at that. It's been replaced. January 1992. Ah, uh, so looking back on the last one of these that we had, we uh, had a lot of fun jumping it. It's not really motorhome jumping season. We just got a bunch more snow, so uh, we would have to jump a snow pile, and I don't think this thing would jump, but I think it would plow right into it. But uh, we did save the propane tank, gave it to our buddy that uh, put it underneath a propane converted pickup, and we saved the compressor bracket and stuff like that, but this thing would make a sweet service rig. Oh, that one had a generator. I bet that's what was over there. The generator's missing. You could have the generator run your electrical stuff. You could use the compressor under the hood, to run all your air tools and stuff like that, or airbags if you wanted. And then you could use that propane tank for air in the back as well for like air reserves. So these things are pretty much set up for uh, making service trucks out of. So I wish I'd have saved the generator, which I sold, and the propane tank, which we got another one that we'll probably never use, so. All right, maybe we should put some bags in the back of this thing. We got the compressor, we got the tank, do some heavy hauling in the old country squire. I guess let's go outside and open the hood and get a battery in this thing. Oh yeah, scotch clips, giant insulated butt connectors. I'm sure nothing can be wrong. 
throttle's free. The dipstick. Look at this tranny dipstick. This thing's like four and a half miles long. Goes all the way up there. Same with the engine dipstick, wherever that's at. Oh, yeah, over here. We'll go check all that stuff up there. Hopefully it had coolant and oil and all that good stuff in it. The problem with these motor homes is that people would just drag them out in the spring, pump up the tires, and run them. They never checked anything. They never maintained anything. They didn't get a ton of miles. So usually these things got overworked, ran into the ground, overheated. They thought, you know, this 180 horsepower 350 was going to pull this thing in a boat through the Skelcoho Pass. But let's be honest. It's barely ample enough on flat ground, not towing anything. Speaking of not getting many miles, look at this stuff. 59,000 original miles. Some people put that many miles on their late models in a year now. You uh, done chewing on that bone in there, Dove? You wanna open this hood? He's busy. I guess I'll just do it myself. Boop. Boop. So, 146 inch wheelbase originally. Soft ray tinted glass, 350 V8, custom steering wheel, bright metal wheels, 8x16.5 solid paint, special interior trim, buckskin cloth, 410 rear, turbo hydromatic, comfort tilt steering, oh yeah, 165 x 6 spare, 16 5 by 8 tubeless, so the spare was a different size. I don't get it. RV option package, special exterior trim, and she is polar white. It's a 77 model. June 14th. Happy birthday if that was your birthday. I got the wiring on these things. Oh, spray foam. Oh, it's got hydro boost too. Freaking sweet. More scotch clips. What is with, oh, those aren't even scotch clips. I don't know what those are. What's with trailer and RV manufacturers and their scotch clips? Terrible idea. Are you eating hubcaps in there now or what? Oh, you missed a chicken bone there. Don't worry. It's gone now. If I didn't tell you that door flopped the whole way home in the wind. What is it, about 100 miles, Duff? Oh, you weren't with. What are the electrical solenoids for? Side post cables there. Top post cables there. Who knows what's going on there? <laughs> Come on now. Well, good news is there's coolant and it's green, but it's also overflowing. So we're just gonna button that back up. I'm sure it's fine. Hopefully it's not because it's frozen in there, but it shouldn't be. Trans engine oil. Woo! Duff, you wanna check the end of that stick for me? All right. Oh yeah, it's nice and clear. And pretty much where it needs to be. Maybe a quarter low. Good enough for the girls we go with. All right, I guess let's slip the dipstick back in and see what our battery sponsor this week is. Fire this baby up, Doc. Oh, come here. You got the feather of the dead bird on your nose, you silly goose. Was that good? That bone he ate in there, was that delicious? Some poor animal gave its life so that you could chew on its thigh bone. All right, I'm getting a battery. Well, Pete at Johnny's Bar and Grill in Hollister, California. Go check those guys out if you're in the area. I think they got a website too. I don't remember. Check them out. Thank you for being a battery sponsor this week, Mr. Pete. Uh-oh. Get in there. Don't you know where your home is? Are you too good for your home? Good old side. Let's hook up the positive first. We need a little positivity in our life. How stripped out are these? Oh, definitely stripped out. Because why wouldn't they be? Let's carefully grab the outer perimeter of this bolt so that we don't strip it out even more. Perimeter, diameter, either way, tomato, tomato. I'm guessing the top post stuff was for the generator in the back that's no longer with us. Crackhead stole that, or they owed money to somebody, who knows. Now I'd say we go hit the key, but we don't have keys. So I guess we disconnect an ignition switch and then figure out the jumper wire situation. No smoke, so 
That's good. We don't want to let the smoke out of Pete here. It'd be a bad day. Are you back in here again? You really love the stinky, nasty country square, don't you? Oh, well, look at that. The dope light works. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. All right. I think we're just gonna take this brake controller off and get her out of the way there. I need to put that in our new tow pig. Go check that out. 19, well 19, 2003. Chevrolet Suburban with the 8.1 liter in it. Oh yeah. All right, this was the wrong wrench for the application. Oh. It looks like Friggy King is who made the AC kit for this thing. You know, in all the vehicles we've had, I don't know that we've tested a cigarette lighter to this day. Maybe we'll have to start doing that, testing the cigarette lighters in all of them. Where's the Cadillac? What do you say? Is it the new Blues Mobile or what? Fix the cigarette lighter. Well, she popped out. Oh, look at that. Remember when cars used to come with these kids? That was a greater time. That 8.1 liter Suburban is on the second channel. More and more ski repair. There's all kinds of other shenanigan videos on there. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, more ski repair. You can follow us on Facebook. We got a page, more ski repair. That's where to find all these sweet cars like this thing for sale once we're done. You know, and let's be honest, we were done with it before we bought it. And we were done with it before this video came out. What else we got? We got the Patreon account. We got, you name it, it's all there. We don't do the Twitter. We don't know anything about tweeting. Okay, come on now. How did this work? Flat screwdriver? Okay, I'm tempted to break that dash, but I won't. Just, there's no room. That head under there. Oh, yeah. It's a tight squeeze. Shouldn't have that double cheese we're getting the Super Bowl. Well, busting up that dash is looking pretty tempting right now. Got it. Stealing cars in the 70s is way easier. Allegedly, I don't know, I wasn't alive then. Comment down below what kind of car you had stolen. I've never had a car stolen. Nor have I stolen one. Borrowed. Okay, I think Pink is crank, no, purple is crank, pink is ignition, and red is constant power. I'm gonna go get us a jumper wire and see. All right, red, and if we go to our purple, and we touch these two together, we should get the engine turning over. Here goes nothing. Oh, let's put it in park. We're gonna get run over one of these days. Foreshadowing. <laughs> Sound a little growly off the bat. I can't imagine those last crackheads that were trying to steal this thing or get it running. Did that start any favors? <laughs> oh, sounds way more gooder now. And then, if we. I'm gonna go strip this off. If we hook that to the pink, we should get power to the ignition. I'm gonna take a plug wire off here. Oh, still got the Delco, what are they, R44s? CR44s. We're gonna hook this guy up to here so we can test for spark because we don't have an external coil to test them like we usually do. And then we're gonna clamp that to the valve cover hold down bracket. You guys keep an eye on that, see if we get any sparkage. Sound good? Okay. So we twist the red and the pink. Oh, something's going boy -o -o under the dash. There we go. <laughs> Easy peasy. Small block Chevys, they love it. So, I think we just need gas. We should probably 
Oh no, okay, I fuel line. When does this thing run last? Bush administration? Okay, I'm gonna make a new jumper wire. This thing doesn't have a big enough spade on the end of it. And then we're gonna go from there. Oh, let's go cut that fuel line before I forget. I must have a lot of people who pay attention to the presidential. 2008, what was that? That was like a break year. That was, a, that was an election year. So between W and Obama, right? Obama was like 8 to 16, 16 to 20 was, I don't know. It was GW. That's what we're sticking with. I don't know. All right, fuel line. Well, I was going to show you cutting it, but there's really nothing to show. I'm going to have to go up underneath and snip her off, give her the old reach around. Takes five quarts, in case you were wondering. I always like when guys do that. My dad's big on that. He even writes the socket size and... Who knows what else? The part number of the filter, the weight of the oil, all that good stuff. Okay, let's fill the float bowl with some hot sauce, then maybe just spill a little on the intake. Maybe we'll just leave that sit there and that'll fill it as we keep it running. Or it'll start on fire and light off like a malt off cocktail. Blue to blue, oh, we gotta twist the red to the pink. And then we get something to go boing under the dash. And then we touch these two together. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Oh, it's so easy. Small block Chevys, quadra bogs, HEI. God's gift to mechanics. Now don't you don't want that backfire to take place and spew all over your water bottle of petroleum based. Ignition source. All right, let's do this. Oh, come on. For cheese and rice. All right, seems like she runs good enough. I'm gonna hook up a boat tank and then we're gonna go from there. We got our infamous boat tank hooked up up here. The thing will only run when we got the electric pump running. So, we got a bad fuel pump. This thing's got a three line fuel pump. You got one going up with the carburetor, one coming from the tank, and then a return going to the tank. You gotta plug that return off, otherwise it'll pump all your fuel out of your boat tank into your other tank. I've never done it before, but other people have. I like to run the two line stuff. I think that's pre-emissions, it's something to do with emissions. So, since this thing started so easy, I think that's what I'm gonna do is see if I can't find a fuel pump and we'll stab it on there. Then we don't have to run this clickety clacker. Seems like a good idea, Duff. Yeah. Well, yes, it does run pretty good. The float was sticking, so we gave her a couple of tap tap taparoos with a hammer. Give it a little tappy. Tap tap taparoo. No more sticky stick. Now we just need a, a pumpy pump. All right, I'm gonna go see what I can find and. That thing's gonna probably be really miserable to swap out. Have to go underneath, but we'll get her done. All right, boys and girls, today's lesson is on fuel pumps. This is our stock 1977 Smog era fuel pump from this small block Chevrolet V8 engine. There's your outlet with the threaded line, steel line going up to your carburetor. There's your 3 8 inlet that is coming from the tank. And there is your quarter inch return line going back to the tank. There's several variations of small block Chevrolet water pump and fuel pump. We're talking fuel pumps here. But they all pretty much interchange. This is the one I like to go to. If you need one of these with a two line versus a three line, go get one for a 1970 Camaro. It seems like they pretty generic, works pretty good. And plus the, the parts person will be real impressed that you got yourself a 1970 Chevrolet RS Camaro with a 350. Tell me you got a four speed too if you really want to swank it up this is a spectra premium sp 
1000 MP mechanical fuel pump. Can somebody tell me why they come with two gaskets? Every fuel pump I bought for the last, I don't know how many years, five, 10 years, comes with two gaskets. Like they think I'm gonna screw it up. Think you're gonna use one to shim it? I don't know. But anyway, this is a pretty generic pump. Works pretty good for most applications. Uh, some of the earlier ones had a deeper sump to them or they had pipe inlet and you had to put an adapter fitting and stuff like that but 70 Camaro that's what you want make sure you take the rubber off there speaking of rubbers rubbers are always giving us problems there's a couple of weep holes here and there's a diaphragm in there this lever pushes that diaphragm up and down and that's what pushes the fuel up these don't actually suck well this one sucks and not in a good way but it that diaphragm goes up and down and it pushes the fuel up. That's why your fuel pump is usually the lowest spot on your engine or one of the lowest spots so that your fuel tank sits above it, gravity feeds to here, and then it pushes it up to the carburetor. These two bolts attach it. Speaking of those two bolts, they're this guy right here. These are a 3 8 bolt, I don't know, an inch and a half long. And instead of your standard 3 8 bolt with a 9 16 head, these have a 7 16 head. I don't know why they did that for clearance issues, obviously. I don't know what the clearance issue is though. Clearance, Clarence. Two four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? But it irritates me when people put a regular 3 ace bolt in there. Go get the right bolts. Put in there. Oh, back to this. That diaphragm rots out because you know rubbers, that's what uh, gives us problems over these years. It dries out and then it no longer goes pumpy pump and then it leaks out that weep hole. And then you got issues. So Let's go put this up there. This runs off the camshaft. Oh, it's got a camshaft. It runs off the camshaft. There's a push rod that goes down, hits this lever arm. Yeah, it's kind of a pain to get that push rod pushed up, and then you got to slip this under it and then get your bolts in there, especially when you're hanging upside down underneath the engine bay or underneath in this particular scenario. But there you go. That's uh, your worthless information on fuel pumps. Don't use the factory one if you got one of these. Unless you live in California, you gotta pass smog emissions. Just delete all that. Get yourself one off a 70 Camaro. Use the right bolts. Throw this uh, spare gasket on the shelf. Look at that. Look at this. Just look at it. There's one up there already. We'll just uh, file that away under CS. File that under uh, CS over there. Yes, what's that stand for? Chicken. Alright, let's slam this son of a biscuit on there so we don't have to listen to that clicky clack and be stuck on the side of the road on our Black Hills family vacation with that thing. What do you say, Duff? Did I miss anything? Of course not. And if you're working on one of these or you are using one of these or getting one of these running off a boat tank, that's the one you gotta plug. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day and you're gonna have a full tank or a leak or maybe even both. Oh, another tech tip. I'm gonna dab a silicone on the back of this so it sticks to your pump and doesn't slide around and you can't line up the bolt holes. There you go, back to work. Fuel pump is on, what a miserable SOB that is, doing it from the bottom side. In it up, there's a bolt that you can take out of the block and then you can put a longer one in there to hold the push rod in place to hold it up so it doesn't slide down. I've never once done that before. I had to do it on this one because I just couldn't get my hand in there. And then of course, the orientation of the replacement fuel pump was different than the original one. So I ended up running a rubber line, which I hate to do, but I didn't want to cobble up the nice steel line that was on here because nobody's twisted it off yet and replaced it with a chunk of rubber and put an inline filter in it. So it is what it is. But we got that in there and now guess what? This freaking thing will not crank over. I'm gonna talk about how easy small block Chevys are. We get the one that's not easy. So now it'll start, watch this, it'll crank over. You can hear something clicking up there. I don't know what it is. I jiggled the shifter, it's not that. I jiggled the connections on the battery. It's not that either. So, I don't know what we're gonna do. Keep checking the connections. Maybe we got a bad battery. We've done dumber things, right? All right, we are gonna go try to do a test drive. Chin helped me determine that I had the wire slid in the wrong socket. I had it hooked up to the brown wire instead of the purple wire. So we got our starter debacle all figured out. Don't we, Duff? I don't know that the Duff cam is gonna show much because 
Duff doesn't like these van engines just hanging out right here. And, you know, there's all that space to run around in the back of a van. So we shall see. Hold on, man. Sure does run good, though. Steering wheel goodness. Something's dragging. Step? I don't know. It doesn't sound structural. Get these four tens ripping. What is dragging? 92 point turn. Front tires just slide on the ice. Maybe we should have let it warm up, huh, Dal? Yeah, there's something definitely dragging over there. What are these steering wheels made of that they get so gooey? It's really bad in like August, but I don't know why it's so sticky in February. What's clunking? So many things knocking. Check 
God. It didn't even diesel. Loves it. Oh, our thud thud. Oh, it took our mud flap out. I think this guy is doing the old flappy flap about ready to have kittens. But what is dragging? Oh, Daisy, what are you doing? I think it's I think it's just this guy down here making all the noise. We don't need that where we're going. <laughs> Fixed it. Maybe not. There you go, it's just a curb feeler now. Oh dang it, they was Chevrolet mud flaps too. I can barely read it. Look at all that hot rubber, it's just dropping off the side of the old country squire. Oh yeah. That was a real good burnout, huh, Chin? I just melted her. I was worried that the front calipers had locked up because it wouldn't come out of that hole. Oh yeah. This thing's good. I tell you what, all you got to do to your motor in my home is just put a moon tank on the front. Adds like 75 horsepower. It's not so good for the weight transfer though. Can't pull wheelies anymore. Oh yeah, fire's right up. Runs like a champ. This thing's ready to go to Yosemite. It is President's Day when this video comes out. Maybe we should run her to the Black Hills. You gotta work on President's Day? Or do you uh, work for the government so you get it off? Let's see if she'll do one more burnout. We got Chin catching the footage from the outside. He's doubling down as both uh, video man and editing man today. Here we go. Up. But if we have any more fun, we'll definitely record it. 
Right. Guaranteed this thing diesels now. She's got to be warm. Oh no. Shuts right off. She's good. Just put some headers and some yellow plug wires on your motor, motor home and You can do motor home drifting things. That's what we should have. A motor home drift circuit. Let's bring it back. Let's start it, I mean. Country Squire. Pretty much the best motor home money can buy. Best several hundreds of dollars I spent. Okay, maybe not. Oh man, Duff's really getting deep in the old Hoover Schneef today. Oh yeah. Oh! Outrageous! I think I froze the left half of my brain! I should probably go watch that whole movie sometime. All right, there you have it. We took a 1977 Chevrolet Country Squire Motor Mahome that we got on an online auction. Daisy, Duff, Chin, and I got it going and we did some shenanigans around here. What are you doing, you crackpots? You guys don't have any fun when you get together, do you? <laughs> Sneaky. You underestimated my sneakiness. I fear you're underestimating the sneakiness, sir. So thank you very much for watching. Go check out that new merchandise we got with the 64 Impala station wagon of mine. And hopefully we'll get that car back on the channel and get some miles on it this summer. Uh, leave a comment down below with what you think we should do with this. The only thing I can really think of is to use the drivetrain, rear end, front end stuff as donor you know we got the propane tank we got the air compressor it's got that really awesome tilt column with low ignition switch yeah Duff says it's awesome or if you want to own this thing price and availability in the description down below hit us up mortgage gmail.com if you really want to own it no we will not deliver and no we will not sell parts or disassemble it for you daisy what do I forget? remember it doesn't matter how you get it done so long as you're having fun motorhomes always fun yeah we were gonna do like wheelies with it but finnegan did that so we already ripped one apart chin says the, the tire came off the ground we're gonna have to go to instant replay so yeah motorhomes get yourself one better yet buy this one all right on to the next one what do you think daisy you need a motorhome in your yard Now we gotta find somewhere to park this thing for the winter. Or what's left of it. Well, you can kind of see out the back. Oh, yeah, that tire definitely isn't turning. Just like Chin said. Oh, dang it. Oh, boy. Well, I guess that's where it's gonna sit. Oh, still spinning. The old tire dragon doesn't really help.